Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented to you by Women's Business Owner Alliance of Pioneer Valley, better known as WBOA. And my name is Marianne Marzano of Marianne Talks. And this is my co-host. Hi, good afternoon. Ida Tassinari, Real Living Real Estate Professionals. And today we're lucky to have our wonderful guest, Sina Holloman from Home Care Hands. Home Care Hands, so what do you do? Um, I am the owner of a home care agency. Uh, we service seniors and, and um, people in the community that might have disabilities or might be chronically ill. We go into their homes and provide care services for them. That's great. And that, that service needs to be growing as our population ages. And more people don't want to go mm -hmm. into nursing homes. So you're definitely providing a good service. Right. So. What do you see as the biggest need out there? Like from what angle are you? Um, the biggest need is, um, in my opinion, is educating the caregivers that go into the homes to s provide the care for the seniors or whomever they're caregiving for. Um, families in general, because a lot of agencies have caregivers that are trained to go in um, so they know what to expect, they know how to handle the potential client. A lot of family caregivers are thrown into the situation mm -hmm. uh, unexpectedly a lot of times um, and even if it is expected they still don't have um, some of the tools and information um, and training to take care of the family member um, as best as they could. Now um, what is your particular training process for a new uh, employee as they come into your company? Okay. Um, our training process involves um, an orientation to the company, of course, but it also involves training um, in areas of dementia care, mm -hmm. um, Alzheimer's care, um, how to prevent caregiver burnout. Um, so things like that. What else do we do? Uh, we talk about tips to um, go into the home and, and make it an easier and more rewarding experience. Right. So um, you have to come into this kind of area of uh, caregiving with compassion. You have to oh, come sure, with definitely. compassion, you yeah. have to come with a big heart, um, it's a big sacrifice. So, And where do you get uh, the, your employees um, nursing aid students or uh, what, are the, what is the um, term that they use? A certified a nurse? A certified nurse's aid? Yes. Or certified home health aid? Yes. Um, or and what's the difference between the two? Um, a certified nursing aide has um, a bit more training than a certified home health aide. A uh, certified nursing aide, a CNA, can go in and work in hospitals. Um, they're generally placed in hospitals or convalescent homes, um, assisted living places. Um, certified home health aides work in the homes um, anywhere that the client lives. Now also with your employees that and your um, customers that hire you to provide the service. Is any of those services uh, covered by any form of insurance? There are services that are covered by Medicare, or Medicaid, long-term insurance, um, or individual pay. Mm -hmm. And do you go into um, like a planned community, like an assisted living? Do you offer services in, in that type of a setting as well? Yes, we do. We offer services in assisted living, um, convalescent home, anywhere the client or patient calls home. So. Okay. We go anywhere they live. Yes. Right. So do you also help family members? You, you mentioned family members. So do you do any kind of training with family members? Is that part of your service? Yes, it is. When we go in and we assess um, a potential client, we go in with, we sit down with the family, we go over a care plan. Um, if they, it depends on what the services they're looking for. It depends on what they need. If they need, um, you know, more than three or four hours a day, we sit down with them and we go over what could be done, what, you know, the best outcome for the patient. And we teach them, um, when we're not in um, to provide the services, we teach them how to take care of the patient, you know, to our standards, which right. is excellence, of course. Of, of course. course. Of course. Yes. <laughs> now, you mentioned burnout. Yes. So do you address burnout with your clients? I'm with, uh, yes, your clients' families. Do you address that with them? Yes, we do. It's very important that they know that um, the job that they take on, whether we come in and help um, or they are planning on taking care of most of the services for their family alone, we let them know that it is a big job. It's not a small job. Um, it's, you know, 
it seems that way at first. It seems as if, oh, well, I can do this, but you really can't do it alone. You really can't do it all by yourself. So we let them know it's important to ask for help for that respite care. It's really, really, really important um, to have some sort of um, plan in place so when you do start to get frustrated or burned out or right. tired, someone else can come in and, and help out. Do you have 24-hour-a-day um, um, staff? Anybody, yes. if they need, you know, the evening shifts to be able to, especially when you deal with Alzheimer's or dementia, you have to worry about, you know, them uh, getting up thinking it's morning and maybe going off to the bus or something. So, right. yeah. so yes, we do offer 24-hour services. Um, we, over, we offer overnight and live-in care services. Mm -hmm. And live-in care services are more for um, the type of patient you mentioned, the dementia or Alzheimer patient who mm -hmm. may wander. Um, who may wander and want to go outside or right. think it's, you know, that they could still drive and look for keys and, you know, get upset when they're told that they cannot drive that day mm. or whatnot. Um, Does yeah. any of your services work with any of the uh, community um, plans where, like, Easter Seals or uh, some of the senior centers? Um, we go into senior centers um, to present information. Um, Necess we don't necessarily work with um, any kind of... Right, you're just independent. Right, we're an independent okay. mm -hmm. company. Because I find that's um, always very difficult to have that conversation with a family member that might be entering into some form of dementia or Alzheimer's, and nobody wants to bring up the subject, but it's like the elephant in the room. You know it's there, but nobody wants to address the issue that grandpa or grandma or whoever. So do you, 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 do you speak to most of the family members or just the main person that's hiring you? We speak to, we try to get a group, a family group together. And um, if the conversa conversation needs to be had, we want as many family members there as possible. Right. You know, yeah. it just feels better mm -hmm. for everyone involved. Um, if they don't have um, lots of family around um, for support for that type mm -hmm. of conversation, sometimes you bring in an elder care professional, mm -hmm. um, a geriatric care manager who knows, um, you know, their specialty is um, really breaking down the news and, you know, giving them options. And Then uh, do you also work with um, hospice? We have worked with hospice, in the, yes. In the past, yes. yeah. And, um, where would someone find a geriatric specialist? Is that what you, you refer to them as? Yes. A um, case a case worker? They're, they're, they're a case worker, but a lot of them are independent case workers. Mm -hmm. um, so they, I mean, you can, you can find them there. You can find them online. Um, mm -hmm. We have our resources that, you know, we can reference someone who's, who might need a uh, case manager. Mm -hmm. And someone that's hiring... Um, service providers that are coming into their home. Do you do any kind of like a background check or any personal um, follow-up for all of your employees? Yes, we do. We background screen um, all of our applicants, <laughs> all of our caregivers. They are all background screened. Um, we go, we check all references. We, um, I know most organizations ask for three. We ask for five. Hmm. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. If they're certified or trained in um, have a certificate in any kind of a nursing or CNA or C home health aid, even up to CPR, we get the certification and we double check to make sure right. that it's And valid. that's what, you know, as a consumer, you'd want to make sure that the person that you're welcoming into your home has been checked and you feel confident with them. And of course, with your uh, system that you're using, it sounds like you're taking care of that. But one of the other things, do you have a lot of um, men as home aid We're providers? actually, most of our, our staff is made up of female and, and just in general. Um, across, yes. Acro yes, yeah. across, across the many organizations. But I've noticed that a lot of male applicants are applying. Oh, really? For, yes, which yeah. has been really nice. Well, because I think um, as, a, as a gentleman, you would want, you know, if you had a choice, you would want a male to be able to shower you and help you with your personal care and things like that. Right. And whereas some women might not be comfortable 
So those are the issues that I would think that you'd be addressing with them as well. Right, absolutely. And now, have you come across uh, the language barrier? We have. We actually had a family, um, an Italian-speaking family, who requested an Italian-speaking caregiver. Um, and we made that happen. Wow. Yes. That's great. awesome. That is that's awesome. great, yes. yes. So just back a little bit to the burnout, because I think that's like such a big thing. Is there support groups that, or do you run support groups, or, or are they? So if somebody watching um, might just be caring for their family members, what's a direction that you would just some advice for them. Right, um, there's plenty of different um, workshops and caregiver support groups. Um, our company runs a caregiver support group, um, a virtual one and um, an in-person one. The virtual one is for those who may not be able to get to um, a physical location right, and they can still, taking, yeah. right, so they can still get on the phone and, and vent or do what oh. they need to do and say what they need to say in a comfortable, you know, in a comfortable safe atmosphere. And, yeah, yes, right, and, yeah. and everything, um, you know, it's a safe, a safe phone call, a phone right. call away from a, a small escape. <laughs> right. right. Yes, but there are lots of um, different support groups, um, lots of different resources online, different um, articles um, that people can look up and, and see what caregiving is all about, see how other people's stories might relate to theirs. I personally attended one at my local uh, senior center. Okay. And, um, you know, if you're not used to speaking and sharing your feelings, you'd probably be better off with a phone call or doing yours online. So I like that. Right. And like you said, if you're the one taking care of the family member, you probably don't have the coverage or, you know, the time that they're providing services from your company, those are the times that you're out doing the necessary things like food shopping mm -hmm. and uh, going to work possibly. Right, absolutely. So, yeah. How many employees would you say you have now? Um, we're, under, we're under 50, so that's oh. good. That's oh, very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's still a good amount. <laughs> no, because, yes, yeah, so, so that's uh, relating to uh, health insurance? Uh, once, yes, once you're accepted um, to take on um, specific types of health insurances, then your, your staff level goes up. Right. right. Your staff so up. now, so what are some tips for, so yes, they can go to support groups, but just right now, somebody listening, really having a bad day or struggling or struggles regularly, what are maybe some tips that you've learned you can share? Um, over the years, I've learned that taking some time out to attend to your own needs are critical. It's absolutely critical. You have to take care of yourself. Um, if you can't take care of yourself or you refuse to or you just don't make the time to, then that's going to lead to the burnout and then you won't be able to take care of your loved one. Mm -hmm. So it's important to make sure you take time out, take the respite, you know, take a day off if you have to. If you can't, you know, schedule schedule things around um, time where you know that you might have a little bit of time. And when you have that time, really cherish it. Right. Um, I would say that would be the biggest the biggest tip is is taking care of and attending to your own needs for sure. sure it's and, and ask for help. Ask for the help. That's really big. Well, the whole concept of being on an airplane and using right. oxygen for yourself, if if you're sick, if you become sickly, you know, and I, you know, now you're, what do you do? Right. You know? Right. So that's really good advice. And asking for help, it's humbling sometimes, but you might be, people might be surprised that there are people out there who want to help. Right. There are a lot of people out there that right. want to And help. I found just through personal experiences and listening to other people is that a lot of times, uh, they can reach out to their social groups, mm -hmm. uh, the, maybe the senior center or um, their churches, mm -hmm. different organizations like that. Um, but I think when you're dealing with the seniors, uh, or and dementia isn't always, you know, 65 and older. Right. So, but to me, from my own personal experience, is that they need to be educated on the fact that the person in question is not acting that way because they want to. Right. It, it has, it's like talking to a toddler at some point, but you still, obviously, I'm sure you support the fact that they have to be treated with dignity Absolutely. and respect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No matter what their uh, level of, um, their not their intelligence, but whatever level that they're at. Right, right, I it's call important. Alzheimer's the long goodbye. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, it is sad. It's, it is. And with our demographics, your business is going to be booming. Oh, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Right. But Something we're needed. here to, you know, take care of exactly. our seniors. That's what we do. We. So, so tell me, how did you start your business? How did this all start for you? Um, well, I've been in the healthcare field for um, quite some time, um, going on my 14th year. Yes. Mm. And um, I've worked in various settings. So I've worked in hospitals. I've worked in physician's office. Um, I've never worked in a nursing home, but I trained in one for um, a CNA training. So I went for CNA training, home health aid training, um, medical assistant training, um, nursing. Um, but I really enjoyed working at home with the seniors. That's where I felt more comfortable and that's where I felt the connection, um, the one-on-one -on -one connection that you need to have with, right. with a patient um, or, or anyone when you're in service, a business of service. And so I just decided that this is what I love. This is the population that I really enjoy working with and That's why not? Awesome. No, absolutely. You've really done, gave a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so just to wrap up, I think another important question to answer is when should family members reach out? What's maybe a sign that it's time that they can't do it alone? Um, in, in terms of the caregiver yes. reaching out? Yeah, oh. the care creature, yeah, I meant yeah, <laughs> caregiver reaching out, yes. To, uh, well, once um, it gets to be where, you know, another piece of this is knowing, uh, is self-awareness. You need to know how you feel. When you start feeling frustrated, and you start having a little bit of resentment because these things happen, and, and yes. a lot of a lot of caregivers don't want to acknowledge the feelings that are there, and yes. some of it is not. It, it just happens. You yes. know, you're making a huge sacrifice, paid or unpaid. Mm -hmm. um, so in agencies and in family caregiving, um, you're making a huge sacrifice with your time, with your body, with your your emotions, with your you know with everything. So once you start feeling, you know, a little rumble inside, and it's a little negative, a little negative. Yeah, and you might want to might want to start looking out for help. Might want to start asking. <laughs> right. Help. And and I, I think that's great for people to know that if you are frustrated, mad, angry, re resentful, all those negative things, that's normal. So don't yes. get down on yourself. Right. You know, and, just and don't because and a lot of times it's normal. Absolutely. A lot of times what happens is um, caregivers are looked at, you know, they have this this huge heart. So if they start to feel feelings that are negative, they're not you know, it's, it's out of place. It's out of place for them. And if someone goes to another who doesn't, you know, do the family caregiving, they wouldn't know. Only a caregiver knows. Exactly. Only a caregiver knows. And we so can't if judge. Another, yeah, absolutely not. So when an, another caregiver is speaking to someone who's not caregiving and they're talking about, oh, I'm really upset about this, and, you know, it's a reflection on them that's mm -hmm. negative. And, and a lot of caregivers don't want that negative reflection, even though that's not the case. And how many communities are you servicing right now? We service um, all the Pioneer Valley. We service all the way into Enfield, um, into Connecticut, Enfield, Suffield, Windsor, Hartford, all the way up to Southington, and, the, and then that's it. For now. <laughs> For, For now. now. To right. be continued. Well, great. To be continued. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sina. You you really helped a lot, and I think, I think just one thing that's come out of this that I feel is really important that. We can't judge other people for what they're doing, and we can't judge ourselves, and we have to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a huge field, and we have to reach out and get some help as a caregiver. Right. You know, so that's great. So the name of your business again? The name of my business is Home Care Hands. Home and Care we're Hands. We're a 24-7 great home care agency. Well, thank you. Any it's information it's about WBOA, go to WBOA.org. And we have a member directory, and you can look up all our members, and including Cena, if you need to contact her. So thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.